that's not my question. I understand that you're saying that he has told you about um, whistleblower reports and that there was an attorney present. My question to you is, how, what made you decide to believe him or not believe him? I'm going to object the question because obviously it's very factual, fact specific. And we have already indicated that there was an attorney present, so she can't discuss that. So I'm invoking attorney-client privilege and instruct you not to answer. Okay. Now, based on, you have knowledge and understanding of Matt Chase, and do you believe him to be truthful? Check the form of question. Broad vague. Also, character evidence. Go ahead and answer if you can. What I have experienced with Matt, whenever... Matt has presented anything directly to me. It is presented with the facts or the documentation in hand. Okay. So based on that facts and documentation, you believed him to be credible. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And when Matt Chasen explains to you about um, the money that the administration puts in that segregated fund, mm -hmm. that then Matt, uh, the, the board now is going to the public and asking them for more money, right? Yes. Yeah, he showed you documents that proved what he was claiming that, right? He walked me through understanding the budgeting process, yes. And he showed you line by line how the administration had moved funds from one um, pot of money to another pot of money, correct? Yes. Okay, and he also explained to you the uh, difficulty that that would put the taxpayers in, right? I think I initiated more of that conversation, um, but we agreed that it would definitely be a strain to taxpayers. Right, and now, even currently as we speak, the MPS is asking the taxpayers to um, foot at least that $57 million um, that uh, the administration squirreled away in the secret fund, right? I, I, I'm going to object to questions. Argumentative, broad vague, compound, and it's completely irrelevant to the issues involved in this matter. So, I, actually, I'm going to instruct her not to answer because this is that protective order has been filed. There's no, been no ruling on it, and this is way beyond the scope of any issues involved in this case. So, I'm instructing you not to answer. So, you're aware that there was $35 million put into the general fund by the school administration, right? Uh, yes. Okay. And you're also aware that, that now the state has refused to put that 35 to match that $35 million because of this, uh, that is in the general fund and on your books, right? I have not received anything from the state. The way the budgeting process was explained during our budget work session, if you don't spend certain dollars, the state can um, reduce the next year's budget by that amount. Has that happened? Um, yes, per my understanding. Okay, how did you achieve that understanding? Um, because it was also explained that um, in situations like that during the time in which those allocations were made or those changes were made that um, we would need to go to the state and um, inform them and we were prepared to accept the fact that the money would be reduced the next year. That's, that's the, the information that I've gotten, but I haven't received anything from the state. Okay. Have you, as a board member, participated in any vote to go to the people of Milwaukee to ask them for more money? Uh, Aisha Shakar? That's correct. No. No. So is that because you've been occupied with your city of Milwaukee business or something else? No. I, I, I have been very vocal about um, me being against certain things, and that is one that I am against. Okay. And how would I know that? For example, um, so referendum discussions um, just really occurred with the last couple months. Um, since then, I received inquiries, uh, communications from constituents. Um, there's been discussions uh, amongst other elected leaders about. NPS funding and the referendum and um, there's no decisions that have been made to do anything just yet but I am preparing to have town halls um, and I will be speaking um, with the media when the time comes and when a direction um, or some solid 
next step has been made but as of now it's just discussions um there has been no formal discussions about the amount uh, or no formal action to solidify the amount or anything like that so there's nothing to do with it right now besides listen um educate people and prepare um my stance okay well you've been i mean when did matt chasen tell you this at least a year ago right it was over a year though. Okay, so why has it taken you over a year to prepare your stance? Uh, so the question was about the referendum. Mm -hmm. That discussion is very recent. Okay, the question is also about the thirty million dollars put into the um, the fund that then the state didn't match. So when did you tell the um, your constituents that MPS had done this? So I've had multiple budget work sessions by way of town hall. Um, I've also done some work with Edunomics Lab to support educating constituents on the process and the inequities within the budget. That has all occurred and yeah, that's all <coughs> Well, I've seen a recording that you gave to Beverly Williams, but I, you didn't give that to the media, did you? Uh, the, actually, it was a town hall where I played a clip to explain in the most effective way that I could um, the budgeting process. We've had numerous town halls. Okay. And have at any of those town halls, and you say you recorded them, are you able to point to a time when you told your constituents that Keith Posley squirreled away $30 million? Um, I, 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 yeah, it, I, I didn't say Keith Posley moved $35 million. Um, typically in those spaces, I encourage people to pay attention, to ask questions, and to be better informed by showing up, um, by paying attention um, and engaging with their elected officials so that they can understand the process. And I mean, in any space that I'm in, I don't blame Posley for things like that. I blame the board. Okay. So, um, I didn't hear you identify any time in which you informed the public of the move of $35 million to the general fund. Is well, that I'm true? I, I'm going to object for one question. She just answered that question. You weren't listening, but she did answer that question. I have done budget work sessions where I have spoke about the budget in general. Okay. I have done budget work sessions where I talk about my budget amendments and why. I have done budget work sessions where I'm educating my constituents by having experts present. Uh, if you're limiting it to $35 million, mm -hmm. it's, it's beyond all of that. I have done my due diligence as an elected official to do whatever I could to educate and to be educated. So at none of these town hall meetings did you bring up the $35 million, correct? Again, it's beyond the $35 million. It's our budgeting practices in general. Okay. And just citing inequities, aligning our budgeting practices with the outcomes that we're producing, everything like that. That is my duty as a, an elected official. And I have done that numerous times. So just beyond the about $35 million include the $35 million or something else? Beyond the $35 million mean I'm looking at the budget as a, a document, a legally binding document in general where people need to understand our priorities in that and what it looks like in practice. Are we producing the results or um, the outcomes? And if we aren't, what are we going to do about it? Hence the reason why I have work sessions during my town halls. I got it. So, and you referred us earlier to a um, hierarchy model that the MPS puts out. And at the top is the citizens of the city of Milwaukee, right? Okay. Do you believe that it would assist the citizens of the city of Milwaukee to become better informed about the processes and the other things that you had described if they were aware of the $35 million? Question broad and vague and compound and false speculation. Go ahead and answer it. Can you restate the question, please? Sure. I'm gonna anybody who is a constituent of yours, you've told us that you have encouraged them to speak out about the budget process. Is that right? 
I've encouraged them to speak out, to ask questions, to watch and follow the process, to show up. I've encouraged them to do it all. Okay. And those are just forms of democratic oversight, right? I guess you can say that. Okay. And why wouldn't knowledge about the $35 million be important to uh, your to your constituents overseeing you democratically? Because again, the total budget, I just think about like my second year in was $1.5 billion. Okay. Why would I limit it to $35 million when it's my job to educate and engage them in the entire process? What I have done is explain um, based on my understanding how allotments uh, are made, budget allotments, um, how to understand the differences between a projected budget, actual budget, given the tax revenue, all of that. Um, but again, it's beyond $35 million. I don't go into a town hall and say, let's talk about this $35 million. I go into a town hall, let's talk about this $1.5 billion. And that is my part of my duty as a school board director. $35 million is a significant amount of money, isn't it? Yes. No, okay. And $35 million would pay for a significant amount of kindergarten teacher's licenses that you know are not uh, in effect right now, right? I'm going to check the questions argumentative. Go ahead and answer if you can. Can you ask the, ask the question one more time? Yeah. You know that MPS has kindergarten teachers that aren't licensed, right? I've been made aware of that. And, and that based on being made aware of that, you know that, right? So when you say no, I didn't go to DPI and look up every person's name and look at their credentials. That would be a, a, a way to fact find. I have not done that because I don't know everyone's name. Great. What I've steps? Heard it. Why don't you let her answer? What steps have you taken? Wait to investigate. Wait, have you finished your answer? Yeah. I'm finished. Yeah. Would you stop cutting her off? What steps have you taken to investigate? Investigate what? You just gave us an example that you said you couldn't investigate the you fact that you didn't. Excuse me, sir. Quit misinterpreting her testimony. Again, it's improper. She's testified specific ways, and you keep on misconstruing it for your own purposes. Stop it. Can you read out my question when you're free? Uh, what steps have you taken to investigate? Okay. So, and I heard you say before I was cut off that um, you didn't go to DPI and check all the names uh, of kindergarten teachers versus the DPI licenses, right? How can I? Sure. So that's a no, right? I can't. Okay. So what steps other than that have you taken to uh, figure out what um, knowledge you, or what licenses MPS uh, kindergarten teachers have? Check the phone questions, broad and vague. Um, also, I think it's been asked and answered repeatedly, but go ahead and answer it again for the umpteen time. In general, we have a teacher shortage. There is a process that includes emergency licenses where individuals that don't have the credentials may be enrolled in a program like myself, where you go through Teach for America and you're teaching as you are earning your credentials. And so you're teaching on an emergency license. I didn't have the credentials. So when I hear that, depending on the specific or individual situation, it varies. I don't know that there's anything to investigate in that way and understanding that so many teachers come in with those emergency credentials and they're not licensed or credentialed. Or, or, uh, does it make sense? Um, they don't have the credentials right then and there, but they're earning them. They're working toward them. In that case, when I hear stuff like that, Yes, there's truth to it, but that's a part of the process, and I was the I was one of the teachers that kind of went through that process. Okay, and now you're not a teacher, right? You're a school board director. Yes. And you have you're um, statutorily obligated, mm -hmm. right, to um, ensure that our children receive a quality education, right? Yes. Okay. So. One of those things that you might do to make sure our children receive a quality education is when you're told about the fact that um, kindergarten teachers aren't licensed, 
you could take some steps to investigate that, right? Or I can give a directive and rely on those that are in the positions to do that job to do that and report back to the board. Okay, did that happen? Uh, it's happened in some ways. It wasn't a directive for me. Okay. Um, but yes. Okay. So you could have done something, but you didn't do it. Uh, I, I would say uh, there wasn't much to do if the request was already made and it was already looked into and I was aware of that. But also there are a lot of a lot of educators who don't have the licensing that are teaching and if they have an emergency certification, I mean those are some of the people that if not many of the people that you're talking about. Um, that is the case, and then there's nothing to investigate at that point. Okay, and how do you know that, that all of these people uh, who don't have licenses, who are teaching kindergarten, are in the process of getting their license, or otherwise it's according to state law? How do you know that? I'm going to check the phone questions. Fraud and vague again, Ms.